Okay. So to start with some of this heart opening, we're gonna begin in a supported fish pose. So grab your block and then place it long edge, facing the short edge of the mat toward the back. <clears throat> so for me, it's like yeah, probably about three quarters of the way up. And then you're gonna recline back and make sure that your shoulder blades, <laughs> make sure there's not a dog obstructing your way. He's um, to keep it locked, so that's fun. <laughs> Don't do that. They're more expensive than you'd think. And then just make sure that your shoulder blades are not impinged. And so when you do that little shoulder shimmy, you poke into the block. And if it's okay with your low back here, then extend your legs out. If that's causing too much tension, then you can bend your knees. Your arms can be out to the side, or you can take hand to belly, one to heart or any other position that feels right, but let the block do the heart opening work for you here and let your head simply drift back. And if the distance is too far, then either, then place a, um, a pillow underneath you or roll up your mat so you've got a mat pillow. So allow gravity and this block to do work, undo the work, I should say, of all of the computer sitting, all of the phone hunching, all of that forward movement that we are doing habitually. And be mindful about taking an opposite shape with less effort. And see if you can even rotate your shoulders, the tops of your shoulders down a little bit more. So you've got even more opening across your collarbones. And then notice if you're holding any, any additional tension in your legs that doesn't really need to be there. And then settle into your breath. And then invite you to set dedication for this practice, whether it is to Simply note this heart open feeling and seeing if you can resurrect it later when it feels as though you're starting to come forward once again, or simply just to be mindful of this feeling. Noting when you can invite it. And then when you're ready, start to bring your arms in closer towards you. Maybe you have to take them off your body and do so. So you can press down your elbows and forearms, engage your core, lift up your back enough that you can slide the block away just for a moment. Send it up towards the top of your mat and then recline onto your back once again. Seeing if you can, again, kind of recreate that open heartedness just with your shoulder blades onto the mat. I notice if you feel differently than you think you would, maybe yes, maybe no. And then pull both knees in towards your chest, pulling your kneecaps more towards your armpits and starting to bring your toes more together. So it's like you're in a child's pose, like a balasana on your back. And use your hands to pull against either your thighs or your shins, whatever feels more comfortable. And then bring both knees more towards the center of your body. Extend your left leg out. We can take gentle supine twist. Take your right leg across your body. Adjust your shoulders as you need. Send your gaze over to the right if that's comfortable on your neck. Perhaps apply a little bit more pressure with your left hand to your right thigh. And then take two more breaths here. So when you're ready, take it back up to center. Right leg extends, left knee is in and take twists in the opposite direction, adjusting your hips, adjusting your shoulders. Again, options to have a little bit more pressure with right hand to left side, two more breaths. And then take your knee back to center, pull both knees in towards your chest. We're gonna come over to um, a tabletop pose. So you can either roll to one side and come up or rock up and down the length of your back. And then use that momentum to roll over hands and knees. Tabletop. And from here, we're actually going to move into that actual child's pose. Knees a little bit wider, toes to touch. Shift your hips back, reach your arms out far. So we're going to take an active one here. 
So maybe if it feels all right, so you could even come up onto your fingertips. If that doesn't quite feel right, you'd prefer to have palms down if that feels more grounded and secure and in more in line with what you need, then take that option. Wrap your inner elbows up, press your hips towards your heels and allow your breath to be large through your rib cage on all sides. When you're ready, lift up your torso about halfway and take your torso over to the right. So your belly is over onto your right thigh. Two breaths here. And then release that tension a bit and then swing your body over to the left side, coming to twist the balasana on this side. Once you get to where you're going, two breaths. Lift your way up and then come back to your hands and your knees. We're going to take a traditional cow and cat here. Inhale, drop your belly, lift up your hips and your heart, look up. Exhale, press your hands and knees to your cat pose. And then just start to flow through these two poses and finding those movements that feel right to you. So I really like bending my elbows as I'm moving from one pose to the next. I feel like I can get a lot of good extension there. And maybe that works for you, or perhaps you'd like to take more of a C curve, um, you know, starting to kind of like people say jump rope your spine. Just start to explore some of those feelings. And really, really, when you're coming into the cow pose, see how much you can reach your heart forward and your shoulders back. And then after your next cat pose, come back to that neutral uh, tabletop. Anahatasana, melting heart. Take your hands out towards the front corners of your yoga mat, fingertips wide, inner elbows up and start to drop your chest down. And then when you're ready on the next exhale, start to press your way back up to hands and knees. Tuck your toes and then send your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Walk your hands in about one hand's distance closer to you. So you're in squatty dog. Take your right hand to your left thigh, calf or ankle. We're going to start to stretch underneath. So starting to look underneath your left armpit, pull your left hip back and make sure you're placing equal weight as best you can into both of your feet. Replace your right hand back down so it's in line with your left and then take your left hand across your body, thigh, calf or ankle. Right hip pulls back, maybe looking underneath your right armpit. And then place your left hand back in line with the other. Bend your knee slightly and then start to walk your hands back towards the back of your mat. So you're at a forward fold back of your mat. Ragdoll pose first, bend your knees gently, take elbows and hands. And if you took elbows and hands variation, uh, switch out the clasp, which for some reason this feels like immensely different for me. Like I actually have to think about the way that I'm switching my hands, otherwise I end up in the same spot. And then release your fingertips down to the mat. Inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Really press your fingers. We're gonna stay in this Ardha Uttanasana for several breaths. So you've got your shoulder blades back, your fingertips are either pressed against your shins or the mat. Press your feet down into the mat and then away from you and see if you can feel that feeling in your outer hips and then reach your heart forward even more. Maybe even shift the weight a little bit more into the balls of your feet than your heels. And then exhale, take a forward fold. Bend your knees pretty deeply once again. We're gonna take a forward fold twist. So left hand directly below your face, pull your right fingertips up toward the ceiling. Send your gaze up towards your right thumb. Exhale, place your right hand down, left fingertips come up on an inhale. Exhale, release the left hand down. Bend your knee so you can walk back out to your downward facing dog. Then lift onto your toes on an inhale, come to the top of plank pose, check your work. Notice if you need to adjust a little bit. And then come down to your forearms for a forearm plank. So if your hands, arms can be parallel, awesome. If not, no worries, just interlace your fingertips. Lift up to the insides of your thighs, reach your heart forward even here. 
Simply breathe. Then come back up onto your palms, press up and back to downward facing dog. Find that deep stretch and maybe even take your hands a little bit wider than usual. Bend your knees, look towards the top of your mat and on an exhale, step or hop all the way to the top to your forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, look forward, exhale, fold. Take your hands to your hips, point your elbows up, roll your shoulders back behind you, sink your chin out, inhale, come up to standing. Exhale, arms alongside your body in Tadasana. Take your toes together, heels slightly apart. Inhale, sit low, Utkatasana chair pose. And then take your hands to your low back, interlace your fingers, notice which pinky is on the outside, drop your knuckles in this uh, Utkatasana, this fierce pose, reach your arms away from you, shift the weight towards your heels slightly. And then keeping your hands clasped on an exhale, dive forward, maybe starting to straighten your legs, keeping your hands clasped best you can. And then take your hands back down to your waist then release them down toward the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward, fold. We're gonna do that once again, hands to hips, point your elbows up, shoulders up and back, chin out, inhale, come up standing. Exhale, come back to your Tadasana pose. Utkatasana, sit low, first with arms lifted. And then interlace fingers opposite way. Press the heels of your hands together, shrug your shoulders down and back. Reach your knuckles back. Low belly in, sit maybe even a little bit lower. So you've got all kinds of opposing motions going on here. Your heart reaches forward as your knuckles reach you back. And then keeping hands clasped best as you can, start to dive your chest down towards your thighs, maybe starting to lift up your hips so your legs become straighter. And then hands to your hips, release your fingertips down toward the mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, look out. Exhale, fold, step back to the top of your plank pose. And then you're going to flip to the tops of your feet for pointed plank. And we're gonna to move to an upward facing dog. So reach your heart forward, allow your hips to drop down. <laughs> Puppy help there. Inner elbows are forward. Draw the tops of your shoulders back, the outsides of your shoulders back. And then keeping your toes as they are. On an exhale, start to lift up to your down dog, but with pointed toes and then flip over. On your next inhale, right leg comes up and back, tripod, bend your knee, open up through your hips, point your right knee up really, really high, and then re-straighten the leg. On an exhale, take your knee to your nose and place your foot between your hands towards your right thumb. Drop your left knee down to the mat. When you're ready, come up to your Andre Nasana. And then we're gonna take three heart openers here with cactus arms. Inhale here, prepare, exhale, cactus, send your gaze up, move like your elbows could tap behind you. Inhale, come up, start to bring your torso straight up again. Exhale, deepen. Inhale, come up. Third time like that. Bring your arms back up toward the ceiling. This time you're gonna take your right hand to the inside of your right foot. Yeah. So your left arm is up or hands to your waist, looking up toward the ceiling. On an inhale, come right back up, both arms lift, and then take your right hand to tap your left thigh, left fingertips lift up. Inhale, come back to Andrenasana. We'll do that once more. Exhale, take your right hand to the inside of the front foot, look up towards the left hand. Inhale, both are up, square off, and then cycle around, exhale, left hand, right hand to left thigh, that is. Inhale, back up to the ceiling, traditional Anjane, and then exhale, take your hands down to the mat. We're gonna do a couple hip dips here, so I like using blocks here. Um, if you prefer to just be on the mat, that is also good. I like to use uh, the second height. First height is also good. The top height gets a little bit iffy. So tuck your back toes to lift up your back knee. On an inhale, you're gonna drop your hips, reach your heart forward, shoulders back, look up. The back knee will bend a little bit. And then on exhale, lift your hips up and back, start to straighten the front leg. Modified pyramid pose, reach your chin to your chin. Again, inhale, reach your heart forward, really drop that back knee, give yourself space, exhale. Use it as you then descend. One more time like that, inhale, reach your heart forward. Exhale, take it up and back. All right, in this modified pyramid pose this time, inhale, lift up halfway, 
pull your right toes towards your face and then reach your chest back down towards your thighs. All right, lift out of the pose as you need. Release your toes back down to the mat. Bend into the right knee. Set the blocks back towards the front of the mat where they were. Step your right foot back to meet your left. And then on an exhale, lower to your mat or towards your mat if you'd prefer to take an upward facing dog. Untuck your toes for the back bend of your choice, whether it's cobra or up dog or any other variation of cobra. And then on exhale, downward facing dog. Take a moment to check back in with the dedication that you set. So I couldn't feel hear Annie growling earlier, but I don't know if you can hear like dog toys in the background over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm muted because you came real insane. Oh my gosh. <laughs> when you're ready, from down dog, inhale, left leg up and back, bend your knee, open up through your hips, really pointing the knee up. And then square out, re-straight into the tripod. Exhale, take your knee to your nose, place your foot between your hands towards your left thumb. Drop the right knee as you're ready. Take Anjana Asana, arms lift, settle in. Right hip draws back as left comes, sorry, right forward, left back here. And then three times, heart opening. Inhale, inhale prepare, exhale, tap those arms. Inhale, back to Anjana Asana. Exhale, deepen. Inhale, lift up. Third time like that, open. Inhale back up. And we're gonna take that bit of an Anjane flow. So on an exhale, take your left hand to the inside of your left leg, look up towards your right fingertips. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, cycle the left arm behind you. Inhale, come back to center. Second time like that, exhale, left hand comes down to the inside of the foot. Inhale, comes back to center, cycle all the way around, tapping the back leg. And then inhale, come up. Exhale, plant your hands down toward the mat. Grab the blocks if you did so on the first side. Otherwise, we'll just come up onto spider fingers. Tuck the back toes, lift up the back knee. We're gonna take three of those hip dips. Inhale, drop hips, reach your heart forward. Gaze up, bending the back knee, that'll help. Exhale, start to straighten both legs. Dive your chest down, left hip draws back. Inhale, drop down, heart open. Exhale, modified pyramid. Third time like that. And this time you're gonna hang out here in this modified pyramid for several breaths. And if you'd like to take this slightly differently with this variation, lift up halfway, pull your left toes towards your face so only the heel is on the mat, and then start to bring your chest down to your thigh again. For me, there's a drastic difference in how far down I go. All right, inhale, lift up halfway. Release the foot down, re-bend into the left knee. Set your blocks to the side. Step your left foot back to meet your right. Optional vinyasa. We'll meet back in downward facing dog. On the inhale, rise to your toes. Come to the top of a plank pose. Come back down to your forearms. Forearm plank, second time. Fingertips thread wide unless uh, you've got um, your hands in a triangle shape. And then we're going to move into a dolphin pose to so start to walk your feet in closer to you. So this will start to lift up your hips, essentially downward facing dog, but on your forearms, press down and away, and then maybe step in your feet the tiniest bit closer. And then slowly, slowly, slowly walk the feet back out until you're in that, uh, Plank pose once again. Press up to your hands. Flip the tops of your feet. Reach your shoulders back, start to drop your hips. Upward facing dog. Press down through your hands, really spread those fingertips wide. And then keeping your toes pointed, exhale, lift your hips up. And then come back to your downward facing dog. And then breathe. On your next inhale, lift your right leg toward the ceiling. On an exhale, place the foot between your hands toward right thumb. Set up your lower body for warrior two. And then you're gonna take a down dog warrior two hybrid. So take your torso out to the left, reach your arms out wide in front of you. And depending on how like your hips feel here, 
you might want to kind of stick your bum back if that feels okay. And also you can feel free to use a block to lift up your hands just a bit. Keep the deep bend in your right knee. Keeping your legs as they are, realign your hands and your torso back towards the front of the mat so you've got lots of stability. And then on an exhale, come into warrior two, traditional. Lifting all the way up. Yes. Flip your right palm, drop your left, exalted warrior, take it up. And then come back to the warrior two, straighten your front leg. And you're gonna surf over to Trikonasana. So reach forward, forward, forward. Take your right hand down, angle your left shoulder up and then point your left fingertips up toward the ceiling. So from here, we're gonna take a little bit of a flow from triangle pose to extended side angle. So if you'd like, you can always take a block a little bit closer in, and we're gonna be doing hand to the inside of the foot for this variation because of the flow. So the block could go to the inside of your right foot if you want that, creates just a little bit more, often a little more smooth landing here. So. You're in your Trikonasana pose. <laughs> Look down towards your right foot, bend into your right knee. So you've got your hand to the block or you can bring it, move it up to the, uh, the top of your thigh. Swing your left arm around for an extended version so that your bicep is over your ear. Left pinky pointed down, rotate your right rib cage up. All right, look back up to your left hand, straighten the right leg coming to your trikonasana once again. Again, exhale, moving back to the extended side angle, bending through the front knee, reaching through your left arm. Third time like that, lift into your triangle, straightening front leg, really reaching your tailbone towards your left heel. And then third time, exhale, take it all the way down. Nice, look down towards your left, right foot and then cycle all the way down. You're gonna take your left hand down Set the block away just a bit. Wiggle your right foot out to the side. We're gonna move into a lizard pose. So right toes slightly out. I'm gonna be dropping my left leg down for this. However, if you wanna take a different variation with me up, feel free to do that. Inhale, reach your heart forward. Find that space that we've been cultivating. And then on an exhale, start to lower down onto the block or onto your forearms. Press down through the big toe mound, little toe mound and center of your heel of your right foot. Soften all the places that don't require attention. And then when you're ready, start to press up into your palms. If your left knee is up, do drop it down. Take your left hand out a little bit wider. You're going to kick your left heel towards your bum and then cycle your right arm up and back to catch your foot. Send your hips back to meet. Uh, your, your bum to your heel, and then rebend into the front knee for a quadricep stretch. And if you'd like, you can even take your left arm down. So you come onto your forearm for a deeper stretch here, only if it suits you. Only if that's something that really supports why you showed up. All right, wherever you are, release the grip of the foot. Come up onto your hand if you took that forearm down approach. Walk your right foot in, so it's heel aligned with your hip. Tuck your back toes, lift up the back knee, step your right foot back and press up to downward facing dog. Take several breaths here. And again, rise to your toes, come to the top of a plank pose. Come down onto your forearms, forearm plank. When you're ready from forearm plank, Dolphin pose, walking your feet in. And then maybe take it just the tiniest bit further. When you're ready, start to step your feet back so that you're back to the forearm plank. Press back up into your palms, plank pose. Flip to the tops of your feet. Inhale, heart forward, upward facing dog. Exhale, look up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg extends up and back. Exhale, place the foot between your hands toward the left thumb. Set up your lower body for warrior two. And then we're gonna get weird with it. We're gonna take that down dog hybrid. So take your torso and arms, 
out at an angle. Maintaining the deep bend in your left knee. Maybe you stick your bum out a little bit if this makes more sense for your hips. And then lift up about slightly so you can realign, taking your hands and torso more towards the front leg. And again, we're gonna use those blocks. So let's actually set ourselves up and bring them a little bit closer this time. When you're ready, exhale, warrior two. Find yourself in the posture. Left hand flips up, exalted warrior, creates space. Exhale, warrior two. Straighten the front leg, we move to Trikonasana, so surf forward, and then left fingertips drop down. Your left hand can be to a, the mat or a block. Again, we are gonna be doing some transitions, so having a block here is sometimes helpful. I'm gonna use a block for this transition. So first, cultivate your tri Trikonasana pose. Inner elbow faces forward. Low belly is strong, so you can rotate your left rib cage upward. And looking up towards your right hand, Press through both feet. All right, look back down to your left foot. Rebend into the left knee. And then take your extended side angle, sweeping right arm around. Pinky is down. Deep bend into the left knee. Straighten the front leg, move to Trikonasana. Exhale, return back to extended side angle. Take it back again. Noticing any places that are sticky, noting, is, noting any places that feel very fluid. And then look down towards the front foot, lift up your back foot and then point the heel up, take your hands down. And then we're going to take lizard pose on the side. So walk your left foot out perhaps just a little bit further out, toes slightly out usually helps. And then drop the back knee if you did so on the first side. Inhale, heart forward, opening up through your chest and then exhale, begin to descend. Again, you might take forearms to block or all the way down to your mat, perhaps just slightly bent to elbows. Remember to press through that left foot. That's gonna help to keep your knee pointed a little bit more slightly up and not falling to the side. As you're ready, start to press back up onto your hands if you took that lowered approach. Take your right hand out a little bit further, maybe even off your mat. Bend your left right knee. Take your left arm up and back to catch your foot. Send your bum back. Tap onto your heel and then re-bend into the front knee as much as makes sense for you here. And again, the option to come down to your forearm if you like. Release the grip of the foot. And then start to press your way back up if you took that variation. Bring your left foot in so that your heel is in line with your hip. Tuck your back toes, so lift up your back knee. Step your left foot back to meet your right. And then ask it if you'd like it. Make your way back to downward facing dog in all good time. From your downward facing dog, inhale, bend your knees, look towards top of mat, exhale. Step to the top of your mat, forward fold. Breath in, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Hands to hips, point your elbows up, roll your shoulder blades back, chin out, inhale, come up, exhale, hands alongside your body, Tadasana pose. Toes together, heels slightly apart. Utkatasana, sit low, arms lift. Take your hands to your low back, interlace your fingertips, drop your knuckles, lift up your heart, sit your hips down even lower. Keeping the clasp, exhale, take your chest down to your thighs, lifting hips up as much as you'd like for this forward fold. Take your hands back down to your hips, release down to the mat, inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold and deepen, hands to your hips, point your elbows up, roll your shoulders back, chin up, inhale, come up to standing, exhale, arms alongside your body. Utkatasana again. Sit low, you know where we're going. Clasp your hands at your low back, opposite side. Drop knuckles, lift up your heart, sit your hips even lower. And then hinge your way forward, chest towards your thighs, let your hips rise up. And then hands down towards your hips, release them to the mat all the way. Inhale, halfway lift. 
This time on an exhale, you're just gonna step your left foot all the way to the back of your mat, setting your body up in warrior two. Down dog, warrior two hybrid, take your arms out to the side. Three breaths here. After that third exhale, realign your torso with your right leg. Take your block in a little bit closer as you know we're gonna use it. Exhale, warrior two, full posture. Flip the right hand up, exalted warrior, left hand is dropped so it goes behind your low back. On an exhale, go all the way to your trikonasana. So start to straighten the front leg as you cycle all the way around, hand to block or to the mat, left fingertips up. You do have an option to simply stay here in your trikonasana or three times with me, we're gonna move from trikonasana to extended side angle. So if you're moving with me, on an exhale, bend into the right knee, cycle your left arm around. And in time, make your way back to trikonasana. Twice more, your breath. And that third time, once you come to the extended side angle, Send your gaze down, left hand comes down, pivot onto the ball of the back foot. Set the block off to the side. Wiggle your right foot out. This time, your toes are out to the side. We're going to step the left foot forward to a malasana. Might take one step or several. Drop your hips down, elbows to the insides of your thighs, palms together. Three breaths here. The end of your third exhale, release your hands down. Lift your hips back up. Heel toe, your feet back toward each other. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Hands to hips, point your elbows up. Inhale, come up to standing. Exhale, arms alongside your body. Toes together, with katasana, sit low. And then clasp your hands behind your back. Lift up your heart. Exhale, dive your chest down, maybe even to meet your thighs. Hips start to lift, straighter legs. Take your hands back to your hips and then back down towards your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Offer your heart. Exhale, fold to honor yourself. Hands to your hips, point your elbows up, reach your chin forward. Inhale, come up to standing. And Tadasana. Second time, Utkatasana, sit low. Start with your arms lifted and then take your hands to your low back, opposite clasp. Sit your hips low and then dive forward, maybe even chest, meet your thighs, lift up your legs or your hips rather. And then take your hands back down to your hips, release your hands down to the mat. Bend both knees, step your right foot back. We're gonna go warrior two, only in the legs first. And then we're gonna take the dog hybrid pose. Take your torso and your arms over to an angle. Once you get to where you're going, three breaths. At the end of your third exhale, Take your torso and your arms back towards the front foot. Maybe take a block a little bit closer for easy access and then unravel to warrior two when you're ready. Flip your left palm, exalted warrior. Right hand drops or comes to your low back. And then when you're ready on an exhale, you're gonna go immediately to your chicken asana. So start to straighten the front leg as you cycle all the way around. Allow that momentum to help you finding that full range of motion. And then again, Three times we move from this posture to the extended side angle. Move when you're ready, move as you're ready. Noticing the interplay between these two poses. And then when you're ready, third time, or maybe you need a little bit more, so your gaze down towards the front, cycle your hand down, pop up your back heel, Set the block off to the side, wiggle your left foot out slightly more. Toes out, heels in, you move to the last in a pose, your right foot steps forward, really nice. Once you get to where you're going, three breaths. And at the end of your third exhale, release your hands to the mat, start to lift up your hips, heel toe your feet in until they are hips with distance. And then take a ragdoll pose here. If you've taken a class of any kind, take your hands back down to the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, offer your heart. 
Exhale, fold to honor yourself. Step back to the top of a plank pose. And then on an exhale, with knees up or down, lower all the way down to your mat. Take your right arm out to the side, perpendicular to your body. <clears throat> and your thumb is going to be about in line with your eyebrow. So your gaze out to the left. And then press through your left hand so you can roll over your right shoulder. Let your head, sorry, microphone, <laughs> drop onto something. Maybe even bend your left knee and then place your foot behind you for a little bit of balance. Accept puppy kisses as they arrive. When you're ready on an exhale, start to roll back onto your belly. You're straightening that left leg. Take your right arm and close your two and extend your left arm out. Same but different. Thumb in line with the eyebrows and your gaze to the right and then start to roll over onto your left shoulder. Then your head rests on something. You may want or need to bend your right knee and place your foot behind the left knee. Use just a little bit of the resistance of your right hand to help here. And then come back down onto your belly. We're gonna take another one of these belly down um, twists here. So right arm extends like it was before, but this time you're gonna bend at your elbow. So you've got a 90 degree angle so that your fingertips are facing the same direction as your head is facing. So towards like, I guess, corner of a room. And then you're gonna do the same thing. So your gaze to the left and you're gonna press. So you're rocking over onto your right shoulder. Um, this might be significantly different depending on your anatomy. It might feel about the same. For me, it's very, very different. On your exhale, come back to your belly and we'll switch out the other side. So left arm comes out and bend at your elbow. So you've got a 90 degree angle. Trick here is not to let your right, your left hand rather come in towards the center of the mat, but instead to stay here and roll over your left shoulder. When you're ready on an exhale, come all the way back down towards your belly. Take your arms out a little bit wider. We're going to take a backwards breath cobra and then we're gonna hold in that cobra pose. So come up onto fingertips, elbows pointing straight up. Make sure that your feet are untucked and maybe even move your legs back a bit so you get a little bit extra length through your legs. Grow a little bit taller. Forehead down to the mat. Inhale to prepare low belly in, press the tops of your feet. Exhale, start to lift up. And then on an inhale, unfurl, continue to press the tops of the feet and your fingertips. Stay here for several breaths as much as feels right. And then when you're ready, start to wave yourself all the way back down. Bring your arms in closer to your body and then press back to a child's pose. Option knees together or wide apart. And then release your head down. This will be a softer child's pose rather than arms extended out, unless that is something that works for you right now. Start to walk your hands in closer to you until, and then push yourself up so that you're sitting on your heels. So we are gonna take a, uh, a rabbit pose. So we're gonna take that fully, fully forward pose so we can do, then do another fully, fully open and a lot of heart opening. So just to be able to compare these two um, and have a contrast is lovely. So start to make your way forward. You're gonna have your hands back, thumbs down, <laughs> caress your, your heels, drop your head down, lift up your hips, and then you're gonna curl in as much as you can. You're gonna try to get your forehead to your knees and you're gonna lift your hips up, up, up. Make sure you've got a really firm grip on your feet so you don't do a somersault here because that is exactly how much you're lifting up. Point your heels straight up as you do that. Maybe you can lift up your forehead and then come in even a little bit more close. 
Start to lift up your hips as high as you can, grasping your heels. Constricted breath. And then start to rewind, lowering your hips down, laying your torso on tops of your thighs, and then release your forehead down back to child's pose. Your arms might be alongside your body, or you can take them out in front of you. When you're ready, start to press your weight back up onto your knees. I'm gonna take a camel pose next. So blocks or no, and you've got two of them. So if you'd prefer to take it with blocks, take your blocks and plant them on the outsides of your feet. You're gonna be sitting on your knees or standing on your knees, that is. Um, also an option next step down from there is then to have tucked toes or you can have untucked toes. So, Take your hands to your low back, shrug your shoulders back, point your elbows back. And then as we were doing our core work earlier, you're gonna have that same activity like when we were taking that cobra pose, we're going to drop your tailbone. So you're kind of like pushing your hips forward just a bit so you've got some tone here. Lift your shoulders up and back, press through your feet wherever they may be, up and back as though there's a low wall behind you, gentle flexion to your bum to help. And then if and when you're ready, you're gonna reach down for your blocks, or all the way down to your heels. You'll still take those same shapes. You're pressing down through your feet, engaging your core, lifting up through your heart, and maybe, maybe, maybe you let your head drift back. Continue to reach your hips forward and breathe. And when you're ready to come out of the pose, you can take a reverse path. Lift up, take your hands to your low back, come all the way up. Nice, come onto your knees. And then once again, just take a very gentle child's pose. Just coming forward, just to rest. Press up to your hands and knees so that you're in that tabletop position. And once again, we're going to flow through cow and cat as we did toward the beginning of this class, taking the organic movements that make best sense for you right now. And maybe that even means holding in one posture longer than another or taking several breaths in one place. And when you're ready, you're going to send your hips back to your heels and you're going to Extend your legs out in front of you. Bend your knees. Make sure you've got a block nearby and you can come all the way onto your back. We're going to take a supported bridge pose here. So making sure that your feet are far enough in so it's kind of like a regular bridge pose. Your fingers are just grazing the backs of your heels. Press through the tops of your shoulders and your feet to lift your hips up and then place the block underneath your sacrum. Nice and supported and then release down. We'll be here for several breaths before we have an option for an inversion. So no need to rush, another option is coming. If you'd like to stay here, you certainly are welcome to. Uh, if you'd like also an alternative to take a supported shoulder stand, start to bring your knees up over your hips and extend your heels up toward the ceiling. If you prefer to do your legs up well instead, also a good option.
this all this slide and I started wondering these with I'm sure I put that down to the map. There's absolutely no rush here. Take as much time or as little time as you like. And then when you're secure the plantar and your prostate feet, put your hips up and just slide up all way. And then wave your spine back down, maybe allow your heel, hips, heels to lift as you drop your hips. Down. Separate your feet away from each other, a little bit wider than your hips, and then drop both knees over to the right. You can stay here, or if you'd like, take your right ankle and cross it over your left thigh for a little bit of added weight. You can send your gaze over to the left, eyes open, drop closed. If you took that hook with your ankle, unhook it. On the next one, take both knees up towards center and then drop both knees over to the left. Same option, left ankle crossing over the right thigh, if you'd like. And also, you can send your gaze over to the right, either with a soft gaze or with closed eyelids. You took the hooked ankle option and hook it. And then take your knees back up to center. Keeping your feet a little bit wide, knock your knees toward each other, finding support here. And if you'd like, you can take one hand to heart, one hand to belly. And the final posture of this class will be Shavasana. So begin to make your way to that posture. If you're taking a traditional version, like standing legs out and finding all of that restfulness with the palms up, your feet fall on the side. However, if you'd like to take a different variation, maybe another supported shoulder stand or a different inversion, then make the best choice for yourself this time.
begin to draw in a slightly deeper breath. Drifting your thoughts back to the dedication that you sat and then start to make some movements into your extremities. And when you're ready, again, no rush. Make your way to your right side, pause for several moments and then come to a seated posture of your choice for brief meditation and reflection. On an inhale, bring your arms out and up, palms press above you, and on an exhale, thumbs to the space between your eyebrows for clarity of thought, to your lips for clarity of speech, and then to your heart for clarity of action. Apply your head to your heart, honoring that inner voice, that source of your open heartedness, that source of your vulnerability, that source of your strength. It would be so wise to listen to that inner guide. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me and letting me deepen my own. In the name of the highest good, namaste.